body's 80% water, yeah, 75%? Yeah, it's almost the same, like funny, because the sun is, uh, you know, 92% hydrogen. They say the body, depending on the person, is 75 to 90% water. So we're kind of the same thing. And yet you think, you know, how much disease disease is actually caused by disharmonics in this our This is this is truly remarkable because remarkable. I see where you're headed with this David and what a what a great way to help cure some of our ills. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know by the end of tonight you're going to have to tell us some of the things we can do to do this to change the physical structure. Uh, if you can. And also, well, actually, give, me, give me a moment. Uh, tell me about the DVD, Water the Great Mystery. We well, haven't talked about that. Yeah, Water the Great Mystery. I mean, I was filming my film, The Voice, and, you know, we were interviewing a man named Krishna Madapa in Taos, New Mexico, who's working with this new camera that can see the whole aura in three dimensions. And this camera was invented by a Russian um, professor of physics, Konstantin Korotkov, in St. Petersburg Tech University. Mm-hmm. And he's got this movie called Water in his computer, and I'm, I'm watching it. He's showing me little clips of it, and I'm saying, oh, my God, this is the most incredible film I've ever seen. And he said, oh, Americans wouldn't be interested in it. And uh, I said, are you kidding? <laughs> he said, maybe at the university level, and apparently the film had played at the United Nations. Um, and, you know, very, very top researchers are interested in this. But it's so well produced. It was produced for a million and a half dollars by Saida Medvedeva. And I said, I want to see this whole film. It took me three months to get it. When I got it, at the assistance of Konstantin Korotkov and Krishna Madapa, I was so so astounded and aghast. I was just, oh, my God, I want to watch it over. I've actually seen it almost as many times as, as I've seen Close Encounters of the Third Kind. So that's, that's how good the movie <laughs> is to me, which is getting into the 20s of, of times. And now that people are seeing it in America, it's actually – sold over three and a half million copies in, in greater Europe and Russia. So it's really sweeping Europe, and it's won all these awards. And I'm co-distributing the film Voice Entertainment, myself and my partner Jim Wall with Betsy Chase, who's one of the producers of What the Bleep Do We Know? We're partners right. in right. the release right. of this film. And it's now coming to America, and we just released it on DVD. And people are seeing it, and I'm, we're getting emails in that this is the best movie of the year. I mean, that they're they think it's the most Good enlightening and spectacular film, and it, it's just so beautiful. So that is, when I saw the film, and I'd already, like you, known about Masaru Emoto's work, and he's in the film, and so are all these great scientists that I'm talking about tonight, I realized that, you know, it, it just I just had one epiphany going off in my mind after the other, and then I started contributing to the research, The Sound of the Sun. So... That's where all this is going. In fact, it, there's actually a legacy of films by Saida Medvedeva. There's actually a water part, too. You know. Were you aware of this 15 years ago? When I worked on nuclear fusion in the late 80s, and I was a, an associate of Professor Bojan Maglitz, no. When my position in the company was not a scientist, I was there to try to find funding. I had first introduced Dr. Maglitz's you know, fusion um, Technology and his advanced physics corporation to John Bryson, the the head of Southern California Edison, right in Los Angeles. We met on the steps of Southern California Edison, and I thought they were going to fund it right there. And we had already spent twenty six million dollars on developing four prototypes of our fusion reactor, and each each uh, reactor that we funded got greater and greater uh, results towards the goal of nuclear fusion. But it still seemed like something was missing. All over the world, there was there were these, you know, these great um, consortiums of scientists working together on different approaches to nuclear fusion, but there was something missing. And I think it's really a godsend. This all came to me, and now I'm introducing this concept to the world tonight through your, you know, thanks to your voice and your show, hoping that there's somebody out there who believes that, that we should be putting money in this. I mean, we should be we should be putting money back into nuclear fusion with a new approach. And this new approach is restructuring hydrogen with sound waves that, that are similar to the sound of the sun. Now, I know you were talking earlier at how quickly the water reacted from great distances, mm-hmm. right? Instantly, though, how soon can it change and react? Let's say you've got a batch of bad water and you do some of the things that... You, I'd like you to tell us about when we come back after the break, but how soon will it change? 
instantly, 10 minutes, an hour? How long does it take? Oh, it happens instantly. According to Martin Chaplin, who's considered one of the greatest researchers on water in the U.K. and professor, he is saying the change happens instantaneously. Water's kind of like us. Imagine you're driving through traffic, and you have all this impetus. You're seeing a sign here, a person's driving by there, and somebody gets in your way. Your con- water is constantly reacting to its surroundings. The problem some researchers have is that they realize that if you're going to restructure water, you have to drink it right away. Hence, using the sound of sun with the sun with a good set of speakers and a pitcher of water and drinking it right away is the best. Actually, restructures water. Why, does it revert back to a bad state if you don't? Um, if you put it, I mean, this was an amazing experiment done where this is actually a ritual in the Catholic Church where holy water is carried by this nun and she's not allowed to speak or even think when she's delivering it to the priest. And this was known, you know, thousands of years ago, this stuff about water. In fact, Leonardo da Vinci was restructuring water. That's a whole other story. Um, he knew how to restructure knew, water yeah. to such a high degree when he gave it to uh, Francis I, uh, uh, you know, where the Mona Lisa, you know, the same person he gave the Mona Lisa to, apparently it empowered uh, Francis to become the great, you know, ruler of France, and it's attributed to to Da Vinci's secret water, which he never gave the formula to. So, the problem is you have to be utterly silent. You have to, as soon as you have a negative thought, the water will will be affected by it, but it doesn't necessarily override the positive impetus. But using sound waves that are very powerful and concentrated, like the sound of the sun. The, the restructuring, of just using that simple sound with a set of speakers, you know, which we have available, will restructure water to a level that nothing, no machine, not no restructuring technology could possibly duplicate. It is truly the highest value. And when you look at that photo on your website, it is so perfect. In fact, one of the most um, profound researchers in the actual science of what it means to restructure water, Leonid Izvakov, says that the more harmonic harmonic the energy informational structure is prior to freezing, the more symmetrical and the more beautiful the crystal appears. So, And if people, David, have their own little microscopes, okay, at home, not everybody does, but if they do, they can conduct their own experiments and look at frozen crystals of water that way, can't they? Well, they could, but you need to be able to flash freeze the water instantly. There's a difference. Uh, you have well, to have we don't a have that kind of equipment. Freezer. Because it's not going to freeze instantly. See, what happens when a sound wave or even a thought... Hold on, hold on right there, David. We'll come right back to that. And next hour, we'll take phone calls with our special guest, David Sarita. But when we come right back, we'll talk more about water, the great mystery on Coast to Coast AM. And welcome back to Coast to Coast. David Sarita with us. David, uh, let's pick up where we were uh, We were talking about uh, the ability of using this water and some of the various techniques to... Uh, make it even better for us Mm -hmm. well we look at actually there's an amazing example to kind of antithesis of positive because the the positives on using restructured water on the human body are miraculous for example perla perla um an immunologist in nevada shows us an example on water the great mystery where we take a person with heart disease and she shows all the the blood cells are all stuck together and they don't they you know they're it's almost like they can't breathe they're suffocating and she gives the patient a small uh, glass of restructured water and then tests their blood only 10 minutes later this this shows you how fast this can happen and 10 minutes later under the microscope the same person's blood is now all buoyant. There's electrical static charge around every blood cell. None of them are stuck together. They're all floating around, and they can breathe again, which means the body can heal. And this is just, this isn't medicine. This is just restructured water. So now you look at also, we see there's a case in the 1960s in Germany, and there's two cases like this, and this is quite scary. A um, toxic sealed ampule containing um, basically something that could be the equivalent of a biological agent, is dropped accidentally into a, a, a pitcher, a glass pitcher or beaker of ordinary water. And it's left in there for three days.